So looking at these numbers, the beat on the fourth quarter underlying pre-tax, the beat on the net interest income, do these results allow you to begin the new year with a blank slate, putting the reputational issues behind you? Uh, well, if we look at, back at uh, last year, and specifically last quarter, clearly uh, some of the reputational uh, issues have not dented our commercial momentum. That is uh, very clear. We have gained more customers, 300,000 new uh, customers, 400,000 new primary customers even. Um, the lending continued to grow at 3.2 billion. Uh, we got 7.7 .7 billion of savings in just in the last quarter. And as a consequence of that, our net result of 1 billion, 273 million was actually 25% higher than last year. In the First, in the fourth quarter. Now that gives you a very good momentum on one side. On the other side, clearly, some of the issues that, uh, that we had to come out with, the shortcomings that we found in our processes to prevent financial economic crime, that needs work and that needs to continue. Yes. And so how might that, if that work needs to continue, impact your results uh, going further out uh, into this year? Well, it's a mix of, uh, of how you shift investments in order to uh, ensure that the processes are up to date going forward. Uh, it's about you know, having the right tools and monitoring in place. Uh, and it's a, it's, it's, it's a lot of work around file enhancements for, for clients. Um, in the end, you know, it's a, it's a mix of, uh, of, of, of front office people that otherwise would also do uh, commercial business. Um, I bet they do it now in combination. So I think that's a, that's a, good, uh, it's a good way to work. And the yes. real effect on, on, on the cost side, you can't really, you can't really uh, say. It's, it's really a mix uh, of, of activities that, uh, that people have to do. Uh, we're committed, though, to, uh, to finish this and to continue this enhancement program that we already started two years ago. Um, and um, so some of that cost has already been blended into our P&L over the last year anyway. Got it. Ralph, you also did say in the commentary this morning that you see the need for further cost discipline. Specifically, how are you going to achieve that cost discipline? Well, if you look at, uh, at where we are in the cycle... Um, uh, we have basically already uh, a, a quarter ago indicated that we would be a little bit more cautious and more selective in how we grow our, our wholesale banking business. Uh, we will uh, also look at repricing uh, some of the business that we do in view of Basel IV requirements. Um, if you look at that, if you look at our financial markets performance uh, also in the fourth quarter, uh, it's not unlike the market. It's not, uh, it's not a good picture. So you see some of the headwinds there. Uh, and in order to deal with that headwinds, you have to continue to look at cost. And uh, what yes. do we look at then? At first, it is the effectiveness of your sales force. Uh, and the other side is, you know, you go through how your systems work. You go through further investments into being more and more efficient. Uh, so it's just a continuation of the story that we have started five and a half yeah. years ago, but maybe uh, to accelerate in some areas now. Yes. And Ralph, you know, some might say that for European banks more broadly, it's a bit of a bleak growth perspective because higher profits are all about cutting costs. Is a merger something that ING would consider from here? Well, if you look at, uh, at where we actually get our results from, uh, we're probably the only bank uh, that is actually growing. Uh, as you know, we have an approach to the market which is fully digital. And as a consequence of that, we're actually gaining market share also in a eurozone market that doesn't grow itself so much. So we can grow in a non-growing environment. That's the first and foremost important uh, part of our strategy. If it comes to European consolidation, uh, we'll have to really look at the underlying uh, benefits of that. There's only three benefits to gain. The first one is capital optimization. The second one is liquidity optimization. And the third one is cost optimization. Capital optimization and liquidity optimization you're not going to get because the SSM has not been successful in taking, uh, taking away those local barriers around these two components. So the only reason why you would want to consider a merger in a European uh, field is that you can work on your cost side. That means that you have to look at the local component of your cost and you have to, would have to look at those mergers that would work from a local cost uh, efficiency perspective. Uh, it's not our strategy. Our strategy is organic.